Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Namaham Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nirvisesya Sunyavadi Pasyacya Desatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadhi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So welcome everyone to our Ishopanishad class. Uh, we have been talking about the 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 uh, section which is entitled the absolute and the relative absolute and relative right absolute knowledge and relative knowledge we were dealing with mantras 9 10 and, uh, and we're going to go on to 11 today so mantra 9 10 and 11 they're describing about the absolute and the relative in terms of knowledge there's absolute knowledge and relative knowledge, two kinds of knowledge. Remember, what are the two kinds of knowledge? Someone knows? Narayan Narayan, do you remember two kinds of knowledge? Yes, Vidya and Avidya, thank you. So, absolute knowledge is Vidya and relative knowledge is the Avidya. Hare Krishna. So we were hearing that there's uh, different kinds of ed educators. Some people they post themselves as educators, but they're actually doing more harm than good. And we spoke about some of these different kinds of people. Do you remember? What, what were they, how were they called? Veda Vada Rata. Yes, Veda Vada Rata, meaning somebody who simply speaks the Vedas and they don't understand the purpose, the real purpose behind the Vedas. They, they're, they're just like a parrot. You can train a parrot to recite, but it doesn't understand anything. So the same way these people, they're, re they're reciting the Vedas, but their intention, they're hoping that they can go to heaven or that they will get some opulence, material opulence. So they're practicing for some material purpose. But the whole purpose of the Vedas is to actually get us beyond birth and death. But these Veda Bhadarata, they don't know that. So they're like that. So then there's uh, some other classes of people who are also miseducators, who don't, you, they don't actually know, understand the real knowledge, but they pose like they're knowledgeable. They're called, anybody remember? Maya, Maya Aparita Jnana. Meaning, who knows the meaning? Maya Aparita Jnana? Uh, knowledge stolen by illusion. Yes. 
No, one whose knowledge is stolen by illusion. They're mentioned also in the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna describes there are four kinds of people who never surrender to him. So one kind of people, one, ki one group of people who never surrender to him are these maya aparita jnanas. Their knowledge is stolen by illusion. They think they know. They think they understand the scriptures. And they sometimes even think that they're God. And they, they will elect somebody to be their acharya. And, but they don't have any knowledge actually. They don't really know that what is the proper standard or purpose of religious principles. Their knowledge is just covered by illusion, ignorance. There's a third class of people also mentioned. Prabhupada mentions them very briefly. He simply says, the demoniac atheistic person is also like this. Or the, the atheist who, who are demoniac. So they're also, they also, you know, they make their propaganda that there's no God and that you can do anything you like. Nobody's going to, you're not going to suffer. And there are no laws, there are no, you know, they, think, they, they, they make propaganda like that, that everything is just, the world is just simply created for sense gratification and it has no other purpose than lust, right? So, like that, Krishna describes the demonic mentality in the Bhagavad Gita, you can read in the 16th chapter, how the demons think like this. Okay, so we heard there's different kinds of educators and we heard that the result of cultivating knowledge is different from the result of cultivating avidya. You cultivate vidya, you get one result. You cultivate avidya, you get a different result. So if we want to cultivate vidya, who, who do we have to hear it from? How do we get vidya? Cultivate real knowledge by? What's the process? By spiritual master. By hearing Guru Maharaj. By hearing from who? What was dira. it? A dira, yeah, by hearing from a person who is dira. Dira meaning? What does the word dira mean? From the disciplic succession. Not exact. What's the word dira mean? The meaning of the word dira means? Not, not disturbed by not dis illusion. Not disturbed by, by material illusion. Yes, so not disturbed by illusions of the material world. So one wants to cultivate real knowledge, they should hear from the dira. That's the process. And what, what you can see, we showed also 18 items of cultivating real knowledge. You see the, the process of knowledge is that the result will be that one develops good character. That is important to understand, that if one is actually cultivating real knowledge, he will develop good character. So we see that when people go to the mundane uh, educational institutes, it has the opposite effect. They cultivate bad character, they get bad qualities. They go to a university or college and they simply associate with the opposite sex and they have free sex and they take drugs and they drink and they do all kinds of sinful activities. So it just leads to the, the degradation in the character of people. But real education is meant to improve their character and to help them to develop good character. It's important for us to understand what is the real purpose of education. You want to get education, 
You know, you go there, you spend so much money, you go to these educational institutes, you pay big money to go into a university and so on, and you just get so many, you just become degraded in your character. So Krishna consciousness, the process of education, is to help people to improve their character, to develop a better character, to have some control over their mind and senses, not to be degraded by their mind and senses. So we want to understand that. We spoke about uh, how the, the first item of knowledge was to be humble and to be without pride. This is the beginning of the process of knowledge, developing this kind of humility to think, to think that I, I'm very unqualified, I don't know anything. I'm, I'm very fortunate to get the mercy of my spiritual master. So we spoke about this, we spoke about the importance that just because someone may have completed the Bhakti Shastri course, it doesn't mean that they know more than other people. We have to look at the character and we have to see how much you are applying the principles of Krishna consciousness. Are you careful to just eat Krishna prasadam, food offered to Krishna? Are you faithfully chanting the holy name every day? Are you attracted to hear about Krishna? This kind of qualities that we should develop, this kind of character. So we want everyone to understand this, these points. So we're going to go on now and we're on mantra 11. Okay, who would like to, who's going to chant for us tonight? Let me see who's here. Uh, uh, what about Tanusha Mataji, Tanusha Sivalingam? Sivalingam, Tanu, Tanusha, are you here? Tanusha Maharaj. Yes, can you, chant, Maharaj. can you chant the Sanskrit mantra here? Number? Uh, yes, Maharaj, I'll try. Okay, please. Vidyam cha vidyam cha yas. Vidyam cha vidyam cha yas. Tad vedo bayam saha. Tad vedo bayam saha. Avidya Vidyayam Ritam Ashnate. Yes, good. And, and okay, Narayan, you chant. No, 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 one line at a time, one line at a time. Vidyam cha vidyam cha yas. Vidyam cha vidyam cha yas. Tad vedo bayam saha. Tad vedo bayam saha. Avidya yam rityam tirva. Vidya yam rutam asnute. Okay, Tanusha, go ahead, read the translation. Only one who can learn the process of Nest science and that of transcendental knowledge side by side can transcend the influence of repeated birth and death and enjoy the full blessing of immortality. Okay, so nescience. Nescience means ignorance or the process of material knowledge, cultivating not transcendental knowledge but mundane knowledge. 
a knowledge of the mundane world. So Krishna, uh, the, the in the verse here we we learn we have to one has to learn the process of nations and that of transcendental knowledge side by side. We have to learn both cultivation of this material and the spiritual. Then we can transcend the influence of repeated birth and death and enjoy the full blessings of immortality. Oh, wonderful, right? We will get life in the spiritual world. Repeated, transcend the birth and death. Go to the spiritual world and live forever. So you can get liberated, but we have to know both. We have to understand the nature of the material world and the spiritual knowledge also. Okay, go ahead, Tanusha, read purport. Since the creation of the material world, everyone has been trying to attain a permanent life, but the laws of nature are so cruel that no one has been able to avoid the hand of death. No one wants to die, nor does anyone want to become old or diseased. The law of nature, however, does not allow anyone Im immunity from old age, disease or death, nor has the advancement of material knowledge solved these problems. Material science can discover the nuclear bomb to accelerate the process of death, but it, can, it cannot discover anything that can protect man from the cruel hands of old age, disease and death. Yes. You see, the, the, they're offering so many medicines. Can they give us a medicine that tells you won't get, you won't, you will not get old, you will not get disease, you will not die? Is there any medicine like that? No, no, cannot. Now they have this virus, and there's nothing. No, no medicine can protect us. Before the virus, there was cancer, and nothing can cure the cancer. There's so many problems, material world. This is the law, the law of material nature. The law of material nature is that one who takes birth, they have to die. And one who is dead, they will take birth again. So this is the law of nature. Nobody is free of old age and disease and death. We don't like it. Oh, I don't want old, I don't want disease, I don't want to die. But we are forced, we are forced because this is the law of the nature. No, there are many laws of nature, this is one of them. No? Okay, can you go ahead, Tanusha Madhuji, read from the Purana. From the Puranas, we learn of the activities of Hiranyakashipu, a king who was very much advanced materially, wanting to conquer cruel death by his material acquisition and the strength of his nest science. He underwent a type of meditation so severe that the inhabitants of all the planetary system became disturbed by his mystic powers. He forced the creator of the universe, the demigod Brahma, to come down to him. He then asked Brahma for the benediction of becoming Amara, by which one does not die. Brahma said that he could not award the benediction because even he, the material creator who rules all planet, is not Amara. As confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 8, text 17, Brahma lives a long, a long time, but that does not mean he is immortal. Okay, so Prabhupada is beginning to tell us about the, this demon, Haranya Kashipu, how he wants to live, a, he doesn't want to die, he wants to avoid death and he did a lot of austerity and he did meditation and he tried to, he worshipped Brahma to get the benediction. But Brahma said, I can't give you that. Why not? Why could Brahma not give him that benediction? I can't hear anybody. 
see. Your microphone is bad, Prabhu. I don't think you can speak. You have to do something about your mic. Brahma himself is not immortal. Yes, because Brahma is not Brahma immortal. Himself, no. Brahma also has to die, right? Brahma has a long life, but he's not immortal. He also ha he has to die. So, we, just like this planet, this planet is called Mrityu Loka, the planet of death. Everybody dies. This is the nature, material world, material creation. Even Brahma, he's the head of the universe, but he also, he takes birth and he has to give up the body also. Okay, go ahead, Tanusha uh, Maharaji, just read one more paragraph. Hiranya means gold and Kashipu means soft paint. This cunning man, gentleman, Hiranya Kashipu, was interested in these two things, money and woman, and he wanted to enjoy them by become, becoming immortal. He asked from Brahma many benedictions in hopes of indirectly fulfilling his desires to become immortal. Since Brahma told him that he could not grant the gift of immortality, Hiranya Kashipu requested that he not be killed by any man, animal, or uh, god, or and any other living being within the 8,400,000 species. He also asked that he not die on land, in the air, or water, or by any weapon. In this way, Hiranya Kashipu foolishly thought these guarantees would save him from that. Ultimately, however, although Brahma granted him all this benediction, he was killed by the personality of Godhead in the form of Narshima, the Lord's half lion and half man incarnation, and no weapon was used to kill him, or he was killed by the Lord's nails. No, he was he killed on the land, in the air, or in the water, for he was killed on the lap of that wonderful living being, Narshima, who was beyond his conception. Okay, thank you very much. So we're hearing how Lord Nishringadev came to kill Haranyakashipu. Haranyakashipu thought he was being so intelligent because he got all these benedictions from Brahma that I will not be killed in the day, I will not be killed in the night, I will not be killed on the land, I will not be killed in the air, I will not be killed in the sea. So many conditions. And Harani Kashiput was thinking in this way he would live forever. Nobody could kill him. But Lord Nishringadev came. And Lord Nishringadev, he killed him. And at the same time, Lord Nishringadev kept all the benedictions which Brahma gave. And then Lord Nishringadev told Brahma, don't you give these benedictions again. You gave me a lot of trouble. I had to come and fight him in all these conditions, so don't give these kind of conditions again. So you can see this is the nature of materialistic people. They want to enjoy the material world. How do we enjoy the material world? Two things very important, money and the opposite sex, right? For the man he wants woman. And women, they like a man. So, you get the, the, this is a sense gratification. We get some pleasure from our senses, these things. But th this pleasure is very temporary. This is a material world. Material world, everything is temporary. You have money, how long does it last? And the money becomes less and less value every year. The money degrades, everything becomes more expensive, the money has less value. And you have the you have the male companion, you have the nice man or you have the nice woman. How long can we be together? They won't, they won't be together forever. One will die or they will leave us or 
something will, will quarrel or something will go wrong. So we have to be, we have to understand the nature of the material world. That there's no pleasure in it. And this Hiranyakashipu, he, he made the mistake. He was trying to get these benedictions. He was thinking he was so clever. But Lord Nishingadev is more clever than him. And Lord Nishingadev came and he finished him. So this is, of course, well well-known story. I think everybody knows this story about Lord Nishingadev and how Haranyakashipu was killed by him. So who would like to read next? Joshna. A oh, Jolin, eh? Is it Jolin, Mataji? Uh, Maharaj, it's not convenient for me to read because my nephew is with me. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. What? Maharaj, I would like to read. Yeah, you wait. I'll let somebody else oh. read. <laughs> we'll, give, <laughs> we'll give you a turn later on. Okay, what about who's here is... Uh, uh, Intrani Mataji here. Hare Krishna Maharaj, I'm here. Oh, okay, you can I read. Will read now. Okay, thank you. From the Puranas, we learn of the activities of Hiranya Kashipu, a king who was very no, much no. advanced. We read that. We read that. We're on the whole point uh, here. The whole point here. The Hiranya means gold. No, we read that. Um, right. Uh, the whole point here is that even Hiranya Kasipu, the most powerful of materialists, could not become deathless by his various plans. What then can be accomplished by the tiny Hiranyakashipus of today, whose plans are throttled from moment to moment? Okay, see, so let me some... let me just comment on this. You see, Prabhupada is explaining about this story that this Hiranyakashipu he was a very powerful materialist, very very powerful, but he was defeated. He also had to die. So we are we're we're like materialistic people. We're like tiny Haranyakashipu. We're tiny Haranyakashipu. We're very small. He was very powerful, a big demon, but we're just little de materialistic demons. You know, we're small people. So what hope do we? We have no hope of being successful trying to conquer the material world. We have to understand the nature, our situation in this world. Go ahead, Maharaji. Sri Aisopanisad instructs us not to make one-sided attempts to win the struggle for ex existence. Everyone is struggling hard for existence, but the laws of material nature are so hard and fast that they do not allow anyone to surpass them. In order to attain a permanent life, one must be prepared to go back to Godhead. Yes. We, we want to have a permanent life. You're not going to get a permanent life here, in this world. This is the world of birth and death. So you want, we all want to have a long, a permanent life. We're looking for that place. It's not here. We have to go to the spiritual world. We have to go back to Godhead. And so th we have to understand this point. That we make all our, the Prabhupada said, one-sided attempts to win the struggle for existence. Means we're trying to struggle for our existence here in the material world. But we can never succeed because we have a material body. It's going to finish, it's going to end one day. So a struggle will be useless. We, have, we should struggle to go back to Godhead for that purpose. That's what we should struggle for. Okay, go ahead, Maharaj Ji. 
The process by which one goes back to Godhead is a different branch of knowledge and it has to be learned from revealed Vedic scriptures such as the Upanishads, Vedanta Sutra, Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. To become happy in this life and attain a permanent blissful life after leaving this material body, one must study the sacred literature and obtain transcendental knowledge. The conditioned living being has forgotten this eternal relationship with God and has mistakenly accepted the temporary place of his birth as all in all. The Lord has kindly delivered the above mentioned scriptures in India and other scriptures in other countries to remind the forgetful human being that his home is not here in this material world. The living being is a spiritual entity and he can be happy only by returning to his spiritual home. Thank you, Mataji. Yes, we have to understand this point. We are thinking, I have my home here in Malaysia, but this is not our real home. This is only the home of the body, right? But we have our spiritual home and we should want to go there. And the process to go there is studying, you have to study these Vedic scriptures, just like we're studying Ishopanishad. And after you're going to study also Bhagavad Gita. So like this, you will get information about how to go there, how to go to the spiritual world. We have to cultivate transcendental knowledge. So this is all part of the process to go back to Godhead. Spiritual education. We have to get the guidance from the spiritual teachers, the study the scriptures. But Prabhupada said there are scriptures in different countries, different scriptures, right? Just like the Christian people, they have their Bible, and the Muslim people, they have their Quran, and then there's other religions also. You have Taoism, you have Buddhism, they all have their different scriptures and they're all teaching that, our, that we have a home, there's another place to go, that there's a, a real home, the spiritual home, eternal home. So this is the process to get spiritual knowledge. We have to hear from the scriptures. Okay, we'll go ahead. Who's going to read next for us? Maybe we can hear from... Uh, is Archana... Archana here? Is Archana here? What about Gandharvika Radharani? Okay, your turn to read. Okay. From his kingdom, Personality of Godhead sends his bona fide servants to propagate this message by which one can return to Godhead, and sometimes the Lord comes himself to do this work. Since all living beings are his beloved sons, his parts and parcels, God is more sorry than we ourselves to see the sufferings we are constantly undergoing in this material condition. The miseries of these material worlds serve to indirectly remind us of our incompatibility with dead matter. Intelligent living entities generally take note of these reminders and engage themselves in the culture of Vidya or transcendental knowledge. Human life is the best opportunity for the culture for, sorry, human life is the best opportunity for the culture of spiritual knowledge and a human being who does not take advantage of this opportunity is called Naradharma the lowest of the human beings. Okay, so tell me, Kandarvika Radharani Madhiji, what is special what is special about the human life? Why is it the best opportunity to culture spiritual knowledge? Um why hmm. um 
um, because I, um, I don't know why Church and Living HP is already taking a moment in English and stuff. Um, because we're able to think. Well, other, other forms of life, they also think, you know. That's true. Yeah, yeah, the animals also think. Is it because we, we are able to engage ourselves in the culture of Vidya or transcendental knowledge? Yes, well, wh why are we doing that though? Why are we able to engage in culture of Vidya, transcendental knowledge? What happens? that we start to engage in the culture of knowledge. What, how does it come about? How does it come about? By, by mercy of the spiritual master. Is that true? Well, spiritual master, he, you, you may not get mercy, you know. How, how do you get the mercy of the spiritual master? Mm -hmm. Does he have to come to you? No, yes. no, I approach him submissively. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, so should Okay, let Gandharika Radharani answer. You know, give her a chance. Yes? So, okay. so, so you, you approach the spiritual master. What do you tell him? What do you ask him? to please guide me in the right path in my spiritual journey back to Krishna. Oh. Why, why, you, why, you, why, do, why are you asking me to guide you? you may say, because I'm ignorant, Maharaj, and I do things without actually thinking it through. Yeah, but when we approach the, the spiritual teacher, we, we, we have to inquire from him, right? We have to inquire things like, Who am I? Please tell me, who am I? And why am I suffering? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yes, Maharaj. Uh, of course, you may not be suffering. You know, say, no, I, I'm not suffering, I'm happy. I have a good time. Well, okay. Are you? But we are born to suffer in the material march. I mean, material world march. At least that's my view. Yes. We are all born material world to suffer, to burn off all our karmas. Yeah, probably. Oh, well, we could just say, well, it's all our karma. I'm suffering, so it's just my karma. Everybody's suffering, so I'm no different from everybody else. So why I should worry about it, right? <laughs> yes, huh? Is that right? No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> we shouldn't think like that. We should want okay. to. We should want to get free of karma. How can I get free of my karma? <coughs> how can How can I get free of all this suffering? I don't want to suffer. I want to be happy. Why am I not happy? So please tell me, please guide me. As you say, yeah, help me to get out of this material world. So first thing is, we ask, who am I, right? Mm -hmm. and because you're in the woman's body, you know, you have a woman's body, you have to take care of your body, you decorate your body, put on your makeup every day, look nice and everything, dress nice. And, you know, we get, we get very attached to the body, but we're not the body, the body is only the dress. We have to remember we are the soul. So a spiritual teacher comes to tell us, you know, you're not the body, you're a soul. But at the same time, you still have to take care of your body. You still have to take care, you have to look after it, you have to clean it, you have to dress it, you have to, you know, you have to, you have to do whatever you have, to, you know, you go to work, you have to dress nicely and so on. And so, 
you have a material body, but you have to also remember you're not the body, you're the soul. And so this is important. So human life is meant for, what's the difference between the human and the animal? Gandharvika Radharani. Um, what is the difference between the human and the animals? The animals, the animals also eat, and you also eat. Yes. The animals sleep. You also sleep. Yes. So, what do you do that the animals cannot do? Devotional service? Yeah, but be can't do that. before the devotional service comes about, before the devotional service, you first of all have to inquire, you have to ask, you have to be inquiring, you have to ask, who am I? Why am I here? And then you find out about devotional service. But first comes the inquiry. The animal cannot ask, who am I? Why am I suffering? No, the, the animal can only think, eat, sleep, mate, defend. So human life is meant for more than the animals. The human life is meant to, we're meant to inquire, to ask, who am I? Why am I here? Why am I suffering? I want to be happy, right? We want real happiness, not just flick temporary happiness, one day happy, next day not happy. We want real happiness, lasting happiness. So if we don't take advantage of the human life, then we are Nara Dhamma, the lowest of human beings. Nara means a man and Dhamma means the lowest, the lowest of men. Because we're not using human life. Human life is not meant for only being like the animal, to eat and sleep. It's meant for inquiring, to understand this thing. This is the beginning of spiritual knowledge, right? So this is called vidya, cultivating vidya, transcendental knowledge, right? The spiritual master will he will say, you are a fool, just like in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says to Arjuna, Oh Arjuna, you are foolish, you are speaking such nice words, but you are a fool, <laughs> you know? Because that's the duty, the, the teacher, the teacher has to put the knowledge, get the knowledge into the student. So sometimes teacher has to talk like that in order to teach the student, to get the knowledge into the head of the student. Okay? Okay. Go ahead, read more. The path of avidya or advancement of material knowledge for sense gratification is the path of repeated birth and death. As he exists spiritually, the living entity has no birth or death. Birth and death apply to the outward covering of the spirit soul, the body. Death is compared to taking off and birth is to the putting on of outward garments. Foolish human beings who are grossly absorbed in the culture of avidya, new signs, do not mind this cruel process, enamored with beauty Enamored with the beauty of the illusory energy, they undergo the same miseries repeatedly and do not learn any lessons from the law of nature, laws of nature, sorry. Okay, so what is what is the path of avidya about? What's happening? What what do people do? What are their activities in the path of avidya? Re repeated birth and death. Yeah. Why? What what is their activities? What are they doing? Huh? 
sense gratification, Maharaj. Yeah, what, what is their sense gratification? How do they get that sense gratification? What do they do? I don't know, Maharaj. You don't know how they get sense gratification? You do know. You know? Yeah, you know. What do they do? How does the dog get sense gratification? What does he do? Sleeps and eats and barks at other things. Yeah, he eats. That, so that's sense gratification. That's one time, one thing they do. What else do they do for sense gratification? Yeah, he barks at the See? other dog. Mm -hmm. He fights with the other dog. Tells the other dog, this is my place. Don't you come here. Right? So defending. And then other time he, he sleeps. And other times he, he mates with the other dog, finds a female dog, a mate. So this is a business, this is their sense gratification. This is the path of avidya. Material knowledge is all based on these four things. Eating, sleeping, mating, defending. When we look closely, yeah? When we look closely at material life, it's all based on these four things. So this is avidya. This is the path of birth and death. You take birth. How does Prabhupada des describe death? What is it compared to? What is death? What is happening? Um. Change of clothes or garments? Yeah, right. Death is just like changing the, taking off. You take off the, 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 the clothes, right? Take off the outer garments. You know, if you're in a cold country, you wear a big coat, and you come home at night, you, first thing you do, you take off your coat, you know, take off your shoes and, you know, take off your outer garments. So death is like that. You give up the outer garment, give up the body. And what is birth then? If death is taking off the garment, what is birth? Your garment. Hmm? Say again? Putting on the garment. Yeah, putting on garments, right. So birth is putting on new garments, right? Putting on the garment every morning, you wake up, you get dressed, okay, you gotta go on. So like this. So this is the avidya. But people, they don't, they don't know, they don't understand what is birth and death. Foolish people, they're absorbed in the culture of avidya. They do not mind, they do not mind the cruel process. What, the, what, we, we don't notice how much trouble we're going through. Why? Why? Because the material energy looks so nice. You know, the, the bright lights and the signs and everything, it all looks so attractive. Just like when we drive in Malaysia, we see everywhere so many lights and big signs and everything. And it all looks so attractive. So like this, we forget about the miseries which are there in the material world. Go ahead, read a bit more. Therefore, the culture of Vidya or transcendental knowledge is essential for the human being. Sense enjoyment in the diseased material condition must be restricted as far as possible. Unrestricted sense enjoyment in this bodily condition is the path of ignorance and death. The living entities are not without spiritual senses. Every living being in his original spiritual form has all the senses which are now materially manifested, being covered by the material body and mind. The activities of the material senses are coveted reflections of the activities of the original spiritual senses. In, in his disease condition, the spirit in his disease condition, the spirit soul engages in material activities under the material covering. Real sense enjoyment is possible only when the disease of materialism is removed. In our, in our pure spiritual form, free from all material contamination, real enjoyment of these senses is possible. 
A patient must regain his health before he can truly enjoy sense pleasure. Again. Thus, the aim of human life should not be to enjoy perverted sense enjoyment, but to cure the material disease. Aggravation of the material disease is no sign of knowledge, but a sign of avidya, ignorance. For good health, a person should not increase his fever from 105 degrees to 107 degrees, but should reduce his temperature to the normal 98.6. That should be the aim of human life. The modern trend of material civilization is to increase the temperature of the feverish material condition, which has reached the point of 107 degrees in the form of atomic energy. <laughs> Meanwhile, the foolish politicians are caring that at any moment the world may go to hell. That is the result of the advancement of material knowledge and the neglect of the most important part of life, the culture of spiritual knowledge. Sri Isopanisad herein warns that we must not follow this dangerous path leading to death. On the contrary, we must de develop the culture of spiritual knowledge so that we may become completely free from the cruel hands of death. Okay, very good. So remember, Prabhupada said the culture of Vidya is essential. We have to, ha we have to cultivate transcendental knowledge. But then he, he says also, sense enjoyment is a diseased material condition, right? So what is that sense enjoyment? Do you remember? Eating, sleeping, mating, defending. Right, that's right. This is a di now obviously we cannot stop these things completely, can mm -hmm. we? Huh? Yes. We're not going to stop eating and sleeping. And we, we, we want to also have children and things like that. You know, we can't stop all these things. But we have to control them, we have to regulate them. Right? You agree? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, so Prabhupada said, sense enjoyment is a disease condition, must be restricted. Right? We have a disease, you definitely want to be careful. You don't want to make the disease worse. That's the problem. If we aggravate the disease, we make it worse. So, unrestricted sense enjoyment is a path of ignorance and death. Unrestricted sense enjoyment means we'll eat anything and everything. And we'll sleep. Many, we'll sleep much more than we need to sleep. And when it comes to mating, they don't care, married or not married. They don't care if they want children or not want children. They don't think like that. They just want pleasure only. We're thinking only, enjoy, I want to enjoy. So this is ignorance. So living entities, Prabhupada said, living entities are not without spiritual senses. We have spiritual senses in our original spiritual form. But now they are covered. They have, we have the material covering. Now material, materially manifesting, covered by the material body and mind. So we have a spiritual body with spiritual senses. But it's covered by the material body. The activities of the material senses are the perverted reflection of the activities of our spiritual senses. And then Prabhupada describes this perverted reflection. He said, disease condition, the spirit soul engages in material activities under the material covering. So we are all spirit souls, but we're using our material body and we're engaging in the diseased activity, the, the activities which are not doing us any good. So then Prabhupada described, real sense enjoyment is possible. It's not that we have to give up sense enjoyment, but there's, there's a higher level there is spiritual enjoyment 
spiritual pleasure, right? Not only material pleasure, but their spiritual pleasure. So in spiritual pleasure, we also eat and sleep. We can also do these things. Real sense enjoyment is possible when the disease of materialism is removed. Materialism means we're thinking. What are we thinking in material life? We're thinking, I am the body. We're thinking, I am the body. I am the controller. I am the enjoyer. This is the disease. What about in our spiritual form? What are we thinking? Gandharvika, right? I am the spirit soul. Yes, right. And what is, what is the duty of the spirit soul to do? Servant of the Lord. Yes, servant of Krishna. I'm not, I'm not the enjoyer, I'm not the controller, I'm his servant. So this is a pure spiritual form. So real enjoyment, in that position then you get real enjoyment. And then Prabhupada describes about a sick man, a patient must regain his health before he can truly enjoy sense pleasure. So like that. We are like the sick people. We are here in the material world. We have to get our health back. Then we can enjoy spiritual pleasure. So human life is not to enjoy perverted sense enjoyment. What, what do we mean by perverted sense enjoyment? Who can say? Gandharvika Radharani, do you know perverted sense enjoyment? No, Maharaj, I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> what will you, what do people, when they're perverted sense enjoyment, what are they going to eat? Anything and everything. Right, yeah. <laughs> They'll eat anything and everything, yeah. They'll do all of, all of these kind of things. They'll eat and they'll sleep all day and all night. And they'll make, they'll go to the prostitute, they'll go to, you know, they'll do all these kind of things. That be, this is their enjoyment. You know, these things all go on. So this is a material disease. Aggravation, aggra you, aggravation to make the disease worse is no sign of knowledge but a sign of avidya. We have a disease and we, we make the disease worse. So that's, that's ignorance. For good health, a person should, should not increase the temperature. If he has a temperature of 105, he doesn't want to make it 107. He wants to reduce the temperature. Natural bodily temperature, 98.6. But if you have a temperature of 105 and you increase the temperature, this is very dangerous. So Prabhupada said, this is the trend in the modern world, material civilization. They want to increase the temperature. We already have a fever, right? We have a fever. The fever means we have a strong desire for sense gratification. We have a lot of desires in our mind to enjoy material world. And we want to enjoy more. That, that is increasing the fever. So then Prabhupada talks about politicians. Politicians are crying. They're crying that the world is going to hell. But why, why is it going to hell? This is the result of the material knowledge. The material knowledge has caused all the, just like today. Why is there this virus all over the world? We never had a pandemic like this before. Why? Because of the, it's because of our advancement 
of material knowledge. <laughs> this is the result. It brought so many troubles to the planet, so, much, so many problems. So the result of material knowledge, neglect of the most important part of life. What is the most important part? The culture of spiritual knowledge. So Sri Upanishad says, we must, we must not follow the path leading to death. We must develop spiritual knowledge so that we can get free from birth and death. All right, who's going to read next for us? What about... Uh, who, who is here? Keshava Damodar Prabhu. Is Keshava Damodar here? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Can you read for us Prabhu? Sorry Maharaj. Driving right now. Oh, I thought that you're Sorry, driving. Man. Okay, okay, yeah, you're in the car. What about Kundalata Madhiji? This does not mean all, all activity for the maintenance of the body should be stopped. There is no question of stopping activities. Just as there is no question of weeping out one's temperature all together when trying to recover from the disease. To make the best use of the bad bargain in the appropriate expression, the culture of spiritual knowledge necessitates the help of the body, the mind. Therefore, maintenance of the body and mind is required if we are to reach our goal. The normal temperature should be maintained at 89.6 degrees. 98.6. Sorry, sorry. 98.6 degrees and the great stage and saying of India have attempted to this by a balanced program of spiritual and material knowledge. They never allow the misuse of human intelligence for disease sense ventilation. Thank you. Very good. Okay. So Prabhupada is explaining here. All activities for the main maintenance of the body, we don't want to stop. We still have to eat and sleep. We have to maintain the body. We have to eat, sleep, we have to do some mating and defending. We can't stop these things. And Prabhupada gives an example. He said, just like somebody has a temperature, you don't want to make the temperature zero, right? If the doctor comes, or well, somebody's got a fever, call the doctor. And the doctor comes and he gives an injection and the patient dies. And, and, and then we say, oh, oh, we say to the doctor, oh, he's dead. But the doctor said, well, fever's gone. No more fever, right? <laughs> Is Hare Krishna, can you hear, can you hear, Hare Krishna, can you hear me? Yes, okay, we're yes. back, we're back again. Huh? Okay, very good. Let's see. So we're giving, we're talking about this fever example, important to understand. You don't want to make the temperature zero. You don't want to increase it. You want to bring it down to the healthy level. So then Prabhupada talks that there has to be a balanced program of spiritual and material knowledge. Balanced program. We have to, just like you have to balance your time, right? You go to work. You have to balance, you, have, you need also some time to chant and to, to, to read the Prabhupada's book. You don't just work all the time, you can't just work all the time, no time for anything else. We hope not, anyway. <laughs> okay, so Narayan Prabhu, you can read. Uh, yes, 
Maharaj. Human activities diseased by a tendency towards sense gratification have been regulated in the Vedas under the principle of salvation. This system employs religion, economic development, sense, gratifi uh, sense gratification and salvation. But at the present moment, people have no interest in religion or salvation. They have only one aim in life, sense gratification. And in order to achieve this end, they make plans for economic development. Misguided men think that religion should be maintained because it co contributes to economic development, which is required for sense gratification. Thus, in order to guarantee further sense gratification after death in heaven, there is some system of religious observance. But this is not the purpose of for self-realization and economic development is required just to maintain the body in a sound, healthy condition. A man should lead a healthy life with a sound mind just to realize vidya, true knowledge which is the aim of human life. This life is not meant for working like an ass or for culturing a vidya or sense gratification. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. So, so and Prabhupada's describing to us about how we can regulate is it tendency towards sense gratification is regulated by the Vedas. And then Prabhupada talks about these four things religion, economic development, sense gratification, and salvation. They're all important. We need, we need them. We need to have some religion. Animals, they don't have any religion, right? The animals, what do they do? They eat, they sleep, they make, they defend. The animals don't have any religion. They cannot understand God. We, human life is meant for having some religion. Economic development is also important. We want to improve the standard of living. And then sense gratification. We have material body. We want to satisfy the mind, senses. Not too much, just some enough. And salvation. We want to have some, we want to know at the end of life there's some good purpose there that we can get liberation. So Prabhupada said, this, this is good, but the problem is people don't think like that. They don't think about religion and they don't think about salvation. They only think about economic development and they make many plans to get more money, to develop more business, to have a bigger uh, bank balance like this. Why? So to have more sense gratification. What happens when people get more money? They go out, they go drinking, they go gambling, they go traveling to other countries and they, they just try to enjoy sense gratification. And they do all of these, engage in all kinds of acts, eating, sleeping, mating, defending. This is the business, materialistic people. They want to increase these things, but they have no religion and they never think about salvation. So then Prabhupada explains what is real religion. He said, uh, the purpose of religion is meant for self-realization, to understand who am I, right? I was saying we should ask, who am I? Why am I here? Self-realization means to understand who am I and then who is God? What is our relationship with Him? That is also important. Economic development we need, we need just to maintain the body so that we can be healthy. We should not, we should lead a healthy life, sound mind to realize true knowledge.
life is not meant for working hard like an ass, just for cult culturing avidya. All right? Why? Just for sense gratification. So there has to be some balance there. Okay, Mary, you can read now. Mary? Yes, yes, Maharaj. The path of Vidya is most perfectly presented in Srimad Bhagavatam, which directs a human being to utilize his life to inquire into the Absolute Truth. The Absolute Truth is realized step by step as Brahman, Paraatma, and finally Bhagavan, the Personality of Godhead. The Absolute Truth is realized by the broad-minded man who has attained knowledge and detachment by following the 18 principles of Bhagavad Gita described in the purport to Mantra 10. The central purpose of these 18 principles is the attainment of transcendental devotional service to the personality of Godhead. Therefore, all classes of men are encouraged to learn the art of devotional service to the Lord. Okay, so Prabhupada is explaining here to us about the culture of Vidya and the culture of Avidya. He says this culture of Avidya means to understand the Absolute Truth. And he said three phases there are three phases of the Absolute Truth, Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan, step by step. And then he says also, Absolute Truth is realized by people who have followed 18 principles. We read about yesterday the 18 principles, right? Remember what was the most important one? Who remembers? The most important one of the 18 principles. Mary, do you remember? Uh, number 16 is the most important one. What was it? Number 16. Are you going to read it for me? You don't remember. Uh, yeah, I forgot. I know it's number 16. I, I forgot, Mara. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, the most important one was to become a pure devotee and to engage in loving service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That's yes, the most yes. important one, right? Yes. And Prabhupada says, you follow these 18 principles, then it will help us to cultivate, we will develop knowledge and detachment. These two things, knowledge and detachment, detachment from, detachment from sense gratification. We get very attached to material pleasures, material life. We have to become a little detached and we have to cultivate knowledge. So we do that, you follow these 18 principles and you become a devotee and naturally will develop knowledge and detachment. Okay, go ahead, Mary. Uh, the, the guarantee path to the aim of Vidya is described by Srila Rupa Goswami in his Bhakti Rasamanta Sindhu, which we have presented in English as the Nectar of Devotion. The culture of Vidya is summarized in Srimad Bhagavatam. 1.2.40 in the following words. Tasma Ekana Manasa Bhagavan Sata Tampate Srotavya Kilti Tavya Sata Diviyaya Pujas Chanityada. With one pointed attention, one should constantly hear about, glorify, remember and worship the Personality of Godhead 
who is the protector of the devotees. Unless religion, economic development, and sense gratification aim towards the attainment of devotional service to the Lord, they are all simply different forms of science, as Sri Isopanisa indicates in the following mantras. Okay. So, religion, economic development, and sense gratification, if they, if they're only, if, and if they're not concerned with devotional service, then it's just a waste of time. It's just sense gratification. So it's described as nations, avidya. So some people may be religious, but their purpose is just, it, it's just, it's, it, it can be very materialistic religion. They don't really want to get the real religion, which is self-realization, to understand our real self. So it's not just only go to church or go to temple, but we have to, we have to actually understand what we're doing. We want to become self-realized. So therefore hearing is very important. So therefore it was mentioned here. We have to hear, chant, huh? should constantly hear, glorify, remember, worship, who is the protector of the devotees. That is actual religion. So it's not only religion, there has to be the balance, the material and the spiritual. So in our Krishna consciousness movement, we encourage people like that. Can you hear me still? Sometimes it's, a, it's unstable still. So some people think cultivate, mate, cultivate material knowledge. They, can you close your mic? Some people think Cultivate material knowledge means we have to go out in the material world, we have to enjoy the material world more. I have to go and, I, I have to go and, meet, I have to try all these things. I have to eat meat, I have to drink, I have to try all these different sense gratification, then only then I will know it's no good. It's not true. You don't need to experience, you don't need to try these things. But we do need to learn, we need to, just like, just like we tell people, don't steal. If you steal, then you'll get in trouble. Just like if a person steals, he'll get arrested by the police. And then he may go to court, he may be put in jail. After he comes out of jail, he may think, oh, I'm not going to steal again. I had to go to jail. It was horrible. But some people go to jail, they come out and they steal again. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, I'm back. Thank you, Maharaj. Can you hear me okay? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, yes, Maharaj. so I'm describing how some people yes. think. Some people think to cultivate avidya means we have to enjoy sense gratification. We have to go out and do all the bad things. Then that we become avidya. That's not how we cultivate avidya. We have to hear, we have to hear about what's the danger of avidya, all right? If the person steals, they get put in jail. And if they steal again and again, they go back to jail again and again. They never learn not to steal. But the intelligent person, he hears, do not steal, and he doesn't steal. So he never goes to jail because he knows you get punished, you get react. So the same way, we cultivate knowledge of avidya by hearing, by hearing about the, the evils and the dangers of the material world. We hear, don't, don't do these things, don't eat any, anything and everything, don't just sleep all day, you know, do some work, honest work. 
you want to enjoy the opposite sex, you can get married and have family like that. You don't need to go running to prostitute like that. So we need to hear about the dangers. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. We can hear you now Maharaj. Oh yeah? Okay. <laughs> <Let's>... <laughs> Thank you Maharaj. So we're explaining cultivate, how to cultivate avidya, balanced program, a balanced program in our Krishna consciousness movement. We cultivate vidya and avidya. We cultivate vidya by hearing scriptures like the Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita. We worship the deity, we chant the holy name. And we, cult we, cult we cultivate also avidya. We, we have to cultivate avidya to maintain the body. We, c we work, we have a job, right? We can maintain, but we have a balance. Some time for work, some time for come to temple, some time to chant. We, we, we eat, but we eat Krishna prasadam and we sleep, but we don't sleep all day. We just sleep what we need to maintain the body healthy. So like this, some regulation of the senses is very important, right? We heard the 18 items of knowledge. Is it clear? Any questions? Hare Krishna, are you there? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Indra Mataji has a question. Who? Indra Mataji has a question, Maharaj. Okay, what's the question? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Yes. The, um, just re going back to um, a previous statement uh, by uh, Maharaj, you were explaining about life is like put on a new garment again um, comparing this to changing of clothes just now yeah the path of avidya mm -hmm. so i just did not catch this uh, life is putting on new garments again the are we in the telling uh, is this statement explaining the stage of going into vidya or the No, Prabhupada was describing to us what is the meaning of birth and death. And he was saying, death is where you give up, you, you change the garments, you give up the clothes, you take off the outer garments. And birth is where you put on new dress, put on the other garments. So birth and death it's just like the change of the dress. But, oh, it's unstable. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. <laughs> Very unstable. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Welcome back Maharaj. Hare Krishna. So you, this, this knowledge of birth and death, that is also Vidya understanding the nature of birth and death, that can also be considered transcendental knowledge because we understand the nature of the soul. But it can also be, can, it can also be understood to be vidya because we are underst understanding the nature of the material world, that in the material world there is birth and death. So, um, can you hear me? Intra Mataji, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, are you able to hear? Yes, we can hear you, Maharaj. Okay. We can hear Kurti. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna, Maharaj, I heard that. Thank you so much. So, we have to understand transcendental knowledge, it has to be awakened by hearing. At the same time we have to hear about the nature of the material world, that in the material world there is birth and death, it's there for everyone. Yeah. 
Yes. We said eating and sleeping, mating and defending is there. We don't need to stop, but we need to purify these activities. We need to purify them. We need to control them. Don't just eat anything. The animals, they're regulated. They know what is their food. But human being, we don't, we eat everything. Thank you, Maharaj. So human life is meant for cultivating some knowledge, some control of the mind and senses. Follow the principles mentioned in the other mantra yesterday, those principles, controlling the senses, controlling the mind, being humble, so many things. Okay, any other questions here? Now I have some notes, I'm going to send some notes to you about the, the, the impersonalism and about the demigods. So they'll be sent out to you maybe tomorrow, or I'll try to send them off tonight. And uh, Tyaga Chaitanya Prabhu, I'll send you them. And, and we'll, tomorrow when we go on to the next mantra, you need to we'll talk more about demigods and impersonalism. Because we're going to hear about the absolute and the relative in terms of religion or worship. We've been talking about knowledge, different, the different types of knowledge. We're going to talk about different types of worship tomorrow for three days. So we, I'll send, we'll send out the notes for you. You can have a look through them. Okay, the who remembers? What is the makeup? How did we describe the first uh, three mantras in the Ishopanishad? What is the subject matter? Krishna is the provider of everything. Yes. What else? Spoke about Ishavashyam. Okay. Okay. What is Ishavashyam? Take only your quota. Take only your quota, right. And if you take more than your quota, what happens? We get problems, right? We take more than our quota, we get problems. So take our quota. Okay, we'll stop there. You look over everything. We'll meet tomorrow night. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Ki. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Krishna. It's amazing. You know, some of them, they, they don't know anything. Some of the time, they didn't know about what is... Uh, Who's Krishna's mother and father, you know? <laughs> you know, I was asking them about Krishna's pastor. What's the, what's the name Krishna's mother and father? What was the name? <laughs> oh, Krishna. <laughs> okay, so he sent me a link for these people uh, in Singapore.